Good question. How do you um, define that line between being uh, too bossy? Uh, let me try and explain it this way to you. I believe that everybody's a leader. If you had asked Mother Teresa if she was a leader, she would have said, no, I was a leader. Yes, she was. She was a spiritual leader for a lot of people. Um, I believe everybody is a leader. Your quest is to find where you can apply your leadership. That's what you're really looking for. Is where can I apply my leadership, whatever mine is? And if you understand that everybody has the ability to lead, then it's a matter of, what do I need to do with you? How directional do I need to be with you? How hands-off do I need to be? At what point do I need to get you to which I can stop being, for want of a better word, bossy and come across uh, in, a, in a more encouraging style? Um, if you want to win the day and not come over as bossy, the key to it all is integrity. If um, if I have integrity with you, uh, then you give me a lot of space. If I make a mistake, you make allowances for those mistakes. You give me a bit of an opportunity to um, get over the mistake I made. Whereas if I have no integrity with you, then you, you're very minimal with me. And I make mistakes and you see there's a reason why I shouldn't trust you or shouldn't like you or shouldn't follow you. So being bossy, you can be quite bossy with people. I can be terribly bossy with people. Um, and I'm very honest with people up front that I can be very bossy at times. But I don't mean it. I don't mean to be it in an in antagonistic or anything way. Uh, and I always respect for you to push back. But I do have to push sometimes. And so when you hear me pushing, then understand that uh, what, there is a reason. And let's talk about the reason if I'm, I'm coming across bossy to you. So uh, there's a number of things in there. Yeah, I think the mindset that everybody's a leader is a good place to start. I think building integrity is the most fundamental part of being a leader. Uh, and then if you're open and honest with people, uh, that combination there will allow you at times to be bossy, but then realize that maybe you, you've gone a bit too far this way and still have room to come back without losing the person. Does that help? Good question, thank you. I saw another hand over there somewhere. Gentleman up there. Can I read what? The if poem. Yes, I've got it in there. I've got it. I've got it. Have I got it? Okay, I saw one hand over here. Let me ask one question. I'll like end with the if poem. Um, did I see a hand here? I've got to ask a question. Oh. When you Uh, this role I've taken on as interim CEO uh, is a company where the guy in charge was, had to be removed and uh, they needed somebody to step in. Um, my role first was to listen a lot um, and really try and understand business uh, and then as soon as possible create a vision of what I could see was the potential. Uh, so within two weeks, I held a mini conference and got everybody there and gave them a picture of what I, how I saw the world, but then very clearly set the standards. You know, I, you know, I said to them, professionalism is everything to me, and you, you know, if you want to be, be professional and work as professionals, then I will treat you as professional. But if you don't, then you won't work with me. So you have a choice after this mini conference. You're on the bus or you're off the bus. And if you're on the bus and we get halfway down the road and you aren't professional, you won't be on the bus anymore. And two people have gone. Okay, if I've been there four months, two have gone. But just couldn't do it. So that was my early steps, if that helps. One quick question and then where's the um, plan? My iPad or something. Or if you run out of time. No, no, no. You've actually got another 10 minutes. Oh, okay. Um, who inspired you to become an inspirational speaker and um, what advice would you give to someone who's interested in speaking to other groups of people? Who inspired me to become an inspirational speaker? Um, oh, that's a good question. I don't think that's that. Um, <laughs> I, 
I don't know that anybody particularly inspired me. Um, I had seen a lot of speakers. Uh, some had inspired me, some hadn't. I didn't really set out to, to speak. And speaking is a little bit of what I do. I do a lot of other things as well. Um, there are some great, good speakers out there. Um, you know, I've, I've, the people who I inspire me the most are the ones who talk from the heart. There's a lot of very you know, egotistical, flamboyant speakers out there who don't really do a lot for me. But those who can talk from the heart, and those who really know what they're talking about, um, and those who've respected what they do enough to study it. Uh, you know, I've spent a lot of money on being coached um, and getting some support to be able to do this job well. Um, and I still don't think I do it brilliantly, but you know, I, that's because I always look to improve in some way. So, um, yeah, difficult to answer. Different things. Um, I'm just wondering, with being a good leader, how much like would you value emotions in being that? Would you say that you need to be a little bit emotionally distant in order to be a good leader, so that you can't have? Do you need to be emotionally distant to be a leader? Um, I think you need to be able to control your emotions. Absolutely. Um, I feel it's a damn good question. I, I tell you what I do. I'm not telling you that this is what you should do, okay? But I can only share with you what I do and what I... I've talked to some amazing leaders in my life. Um, I compartmentalize my emotions. I can be a very emotional person, okay? I can watch a movie and cry, all right? Um, but people I've fired call me very hard, all right? Um, so I think having a breadth of emotions is important. I, to be able to empathize with somebody, you can't really appreciate someone unless you can really empathize with them and, and possibly live their life a bit in some way. And I think that's it. The ability to do that and to cultivate that skill is important. But there's a time to go, the right thing to do is, I always remember a, a team that, a uh, uh, guy I, I had working for me and he had a problem with this particular person in the team. Um, and he, I said to him, what are you doing about it? And it was, a, it was a lady, and she wasn't performing very well. And um, he said, I'll try this. And I said, well, try this. And, and he went and tried that, and he came back, and it wasn't working. I said, well, try that. And we tried various things to get this. And she just wasn't going to. She was like, yeah, entrenched. And um, one day I came, came across, and I said, how are you doing with that? And he says, I've tried everything, Paul. I've just, you know. And I said, so what are you going to do about it? So he said, well, I don't know what else to do. So I said, well, then get, fire her, sack her, get rid of her. And he looked at me and he says, I never thought I'd heard you say that. And I went, why? He says, because you are one of the most compassionate people I know. He says, you, you really care about people. And I looked at him and I said, I'm caring about the nine other members in the team at the moment. Who are you caring about? The one woman who's never going to change? And he went, Point. I'll get on with it. And she was gone. Now what was really interesting about that story? When she was gone, the nine other people in the team said, what took you so long? <laughs> okay? And then they turned around and said, now before you go hiring anybody else in, can we see if we can divvy the work up between us and, 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 and do it? We don't want anybody else in like that. So can we do it? And so the answer was, well, yes. If you can do it between the between you, well, they're great. And what's more, you can virtually share the salary that you saved. Oh, cool. And, and of course, the motivation that came out of them after that was tremendous once we got it right. But it was so funny, that moment with him, when I said, excuse me, I'm caring about nine people. Who the hell are you caring about? Yeah, that was a defining moment for him. So I think it's important to have emotions and to, and to allow yourself to have them, but make sure you put it in the right place. Yeah. Um, as a leader in a business, what kind of relations, relationships do you have with your employees? Like, is it more on a personal level, or is it simply, like, do you prefer simply just work Employees based? have to respect you. Um, I don't want them to like me. Mm. I do want them to respect me. Uh, why do I not want them to like me? Because we're not buddies, we're not friends, 
and there's times when I'm going to have to say things you won't like. Mm. Um, but I want you to respect me enough to know that when I say it, it's in your best interest. Uh, so it's key that I want people's respect, um, but it's not key to me that they like me. Yeah, sure. That's the dividing line. Let me just quickly do the poem um, for the gentleman up the top there, and for those you can see it online. And I'm doing this without my glasses. So if you can keep your head on when all about you are losing theirs, but blending it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowances for those doubting it too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or be lied about, don't deal in lies. Or be hated, don't give way to hating. And yet, don't look too good, nor talk too wise. If you can make dreams, if you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think but not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves, to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken. And stoop, build them up with worn out tools. And if you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss, and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve you, you serve your turn long after they have gone. And so hold on when there is nothing in you except that will which says, hold on. And if you can talk with crowds, but keep your virtue, or walk with kings, not lose your common touch. And if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, and if all men count with you, but none too much. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything is, and that's in it. And what is more, you will be a man, my son. Look at that. Just put Gifts by Roger Kipling into Google. Read it, digest it. It's, uh, it'll be a great compass for you in your life. My closing comment to you, besides a big thank you for having me here, is if you want to know what the best leaders, 24 years of talking to great leaders, it's all about discovering the best of who you can be. That's what you're really after. Discovering the best of who you can be. And that is a great journey. And I wish you 